Hi everybody, Bentley Compost Guy, Christy here again. In this video I want to talk to you about using old thatch, lawn thatch, as a living material. Now just to kind of uh, remind you and maybe educate some of you who, who haven't heard the term living material, uh, basically what I mean by that is any sort of earthy smelling um, microbe rich material. Prime examples are a compost, a aged horse manure is a great one, um, and a variety of other other things. Leaf mold, another one. Uh, just sort of things that uh, you can mix with your food waste and it can it can really help the vermicomposting process just because it sort of makes it uh, a bit more familiar to the worms and uh, has a lot of good decomposer microorganisms in there. Now thatch is a bit of a outside one, it's a bit of a stretch. I gen tend to include it just because it's probably something that a lot of people have access to. And if you're not familiar with the term thatch, basically this is just mostly uh, old dead grass that you can rake up, or if you have an actual uh, dethatching machine, you can use that. Uh, just from from underneath where the, uh, the the new grass is growing, and what I did was I came along with a typical garden rake. You can actually get a, a dethatching rake, but I just had a, a regular metal tine garden rake, and I just did some stretches of lawn in my backyard, and I had a lot of thatch in there, and basically I put it into a bin and let it sit for a period of time. You don't have to necessarily let it sit, but I just happened to do that. And it uh, kind of ended up like this. So you can see it's pretty old looking, dry looking. Uh, and in places there's some, some uh, fungal growth, some kind of mold stuff growing throughout it. And it has actually a pretty earthy smell to it. So, you know, you don't want to use fresh grass clipping. <clears throat> Excuse me. Fresh grass clippings can be kind of like a food for a worm bin, but I actually don't recommend uh, fresh grass, grass clippings in an indoor bin, at least not very many, um, just because ammonia can be released from grass clippings as they decompose uh, quite readily. And so anything green, really green like that, uh, you just have to be a little bit cautious about. And I find grass clippings in particular can be bad for that because ammonia is very toxic for worms. So <clears throat> you want to make sure that this stuff that you're getting, it's obviously it's got some, some green stuff is going to end up in it, but you want to make sure that most of it is, is this sort of uh, dead lifeless stuff. All right. And, you know, part of the reason, this is kind of a alternative to mixing with bedding. You know, I have this optimized food waste here. I've chopped it up really, really well. But this is going to contain uh, pretty high water content. This particular mix in front of me isn't as bad as it, as it could be. But a lot of times when you're dealing with compostable food waste, uh, it's going to be very, very rich in water. And so you want to have something to balance that. And typical absorbent bedding materials are fine. But uh, if you can add a bit of earthiness, some of these uh, beneficial microbes, you know, what, what I like doing is aged, what I like using rather is aged horse manure. That's definitely my favorite living material. But like I said, not everybody has access to these sorts of things. So, you know, a lot of people do have access to the lawn and uh, can probably get some thatch from there. So basically, as far as mixing it goes, you know, it's not really rocket science. I'm just going to be kind of pulling it in here and uh, just mixing it up. <clears throat> you know, in this case, this stuff's so dry that I may end up actually moistening it. But you just, you want to make sure that, you know, what's nice about optimizing the food waste, cutting it up so well, is that you have all that surface area and you want to get all that surface area coated. So if this was if this was an actual compost that I was mixing in, it'd be very easy to uh, basically coat all the surface areas of this food waste. And so you're getting you're getting all those microbes all over those surface areas. And this is a frozen, then thawed food waste. It's the typical way I like to handle food waste. 
and that helps the breakdown process get the breakdown process started the you know the physical breakdown and then with these microbes then in contact with the surface area of this food waste that's already compromised you know this is going to greatly accelerate <clears throat> the, the uh, decomposition process and greatly assist the worms so what I'm going to do now now that it's pretty well mixed I may you know I would say err on the side of caution uh, especially if you're new to vermicomposting and if you're using any kind of a plastic enclosed bin and this these this stuff's actually going to get added to a couple experimental plastic bins that I have going but just because I'm fairly comfortable with it I may moisten this a bit but uh, it's not a bad idea to err on the side of the caution because these these food waste materials are actually going to release more water as well so this actually looks pretty good the way it is so I'm gonna add that I'm gonna I'll shoot another video showing uh, how I add it to the bin but uh, yeah that's basically it for the mixing process to get it really really well mixed and you're ready to go all right so I'll see you again in a minute okay I am back as you can see, I have my plastic bin system in front of me here. This is actually, if you've been paying attention at all, watching some of my recent videos, um, this is one of the split bins. I recently split a bin into two different bins, and this is one of those bins. I have the bucket of the uh, thatch mixed with the food waste over here, and that's about 1.7 kilograms or roughly 3.7 pounds of sort of food I guess if you want to call it food mix and I decided I didn't end up actually adding any water because it, like I said it's going to be releasing some moisture uh, as it decomposes and you know these plastic bins tend to stay pretty pretty moist anyway so no need to go too crazy and what I'm going to do just to add it is it's been a little while since this bin has been fed and right at the end of uh, April so probably a couple weeks I guess so there's nothing really here in terms of food there might be something over here now these worms are just just going to town on everything you can see lots of really dark rich vermicompost in there I'm seeing cocoons and lots of bedding still which is good yeah lots of worms further down but all you really need to do some evidence of food. I can see some seeds. Especially since I have mixed it with the living material. So that provides a bit of a sort of buffer zone, I guess. Um, I'm not going to bother adding more bedding. And like I said, there's quite a bit in here already. And I'm basically just going to clear out a fairly shallow trough. Just like that. And just dump it in. Yeah, so the big difference between adding it mixed with some sort of living material and just adding the food waste, especially if you don't even optimize the food waste. If you just dump a bunch of food in right in one single spot without even doing anything with it, you know, there's a good chance that it can get really anaerobic and smelly and it can it almost sort of end up being an overfeeding type of situation just because you know it takes a while for the worms to uh, break down material when it's like that they don't want to move into sloppy anaerobic stuff so the way we've done it here you know serious optimization and even more optimization by mixing with the living material I think that the worms are going to be able to move in quite quickly and uh, start start processing this waste. So we're going to see what happens. Uh, again, just go easy on the grass clippings. You know, you want to be careful not to get too many of the green ones in there. And just to be clear, this is definitely thatch, the dry, dead stuff at the bottom of your grass, of your lawn. 
be a little bit cautious about what you're adding to your lawn. If you're adding a ton of fertilizer, a ton of pesticides, things like that, you probably don't want to be uh, even using that thatch. And yeah, that's pretty much it. If you want to learn more about living materials, I'm going to put a link down below this video in YouTube and also in any blog posts that I happen to uh, add the video to. Uh, just a report that I have that is available on the Red Room Composting website and you can learn all about living materials. And that's pretty much it. Alright, so thanks for tuning in. Once again, this is Bentley Compost Guy Christy and I'm sure we'll talk again soon.